Rob is a carefree teacher whose wedding is scheduled for tomorrow. Today, he had a flight to catch, but he was running late. Upon reaching the airport, he discovers that his flight has already departed. His fiancée Megan, who had been waiting for him at the airport, informs him that she has booked tickets for the next flight. They manage to catch the next flight and arrive at their wedding destination. Once there, they head straight to the church for wedding rehearsals. However, Megan's father, Mr. Sam, is unhappy with her decision to marry Rob, as he believes Rob as not being serious about anything. Mr. Sam warns Rob not to cause any problems tomorrow and instructs him to bring all the invitation cards. Later, it is revealed that a company is looking to take over Mr. Sam's business. Concerned about this development, Mr. Sam leaves the rehearsal. After a while, both families return to the hotel, where they are welcomed by Megan's best friend, Vicky. Rob encounters his best friend, Benjamin, who once again emphasizes the importance of taking life seriously. Tomorrow is Rob's wedding day, and he hasn't memorized his vows yet. Despite Benjamin's advice, Rob insists that he will handle everything when the time comes. As they converse, Megan's ex-boyfriend, Cody, shows up, making Rob visibly angry. However, Rob can't do anything as Megan invited Cody to the wedding. Megan leaves with her friends for a bachelorette party. Benjamin suggests they head to the hotel and prepare for the wedding, but Rob is still inclined to continue drinking. The next day, the wedding day arrives, marked by the morning bells at the church. Rob wakes up, only to find himself in an elevator without clothes. Bewildered, he doesn't understand how he ended up there. The elevator doors open, revealing a crowd of people surprised to see him in such a state. A man begins taking photos of Rob in this awkward situation. Feeling worried, Rob quickly covers his private parts and heads to the hotel reception. Surprisingly, the manager informs him that Rob doesn't have a reservation there. Confused, Rob contacts his best friend Benjamin, explaining the strange morning incident in the elevator without clothes. Benjamin, already at the church, urges Rob to join them soon for the wedding. Meanwhile, the manager has called security guards to escort Rob out. Evading them, Rob searches for his room to retrieve his wedding clothes. Startling a maid in the process, Rob realizes he's in the wrong hotel and doesn't remember how he got there. With just a towel, he exits the hotel, still pursued by the guards. Even after coming out, Rob's troubles continued. Because there was a marathon race outside, where thousands of people had assembled. Rob is now roaming around naked. In a rush, Rob tries to leave the area when a woman mistakenly believes he's harassing her. She reports to the police that a naked man is entering the marathon and bothering girls. Spotting the approaching police, Rob changes direction, but hotel guards are also on the lookout for him. Reluctantly, Rob finds himself running in the marathon to evade both groups. As a result, he ends up on TV without any clothes, attracting attention. During the marathon, the police arrest Rob. In custody, he reveals the truth about being left in the elevator in a state of intoxication. The police inform him that it appears someone deliberately put him in that situation and inquire if he has any enemies. Rob is clueless about any possible adversaries. Meanwhile, at the church, Megan and the rest of the attendees anxiously await Rob's arrival. Megan's father, Sam, and her ex-boyfriend, Cody, approach her, expressing their belief that Rob is untrustworthy and may have run away from marriage responsibilities. Megan becomes saddened by the revelation. Meanwhile, Rob calls her, explaining that he got stuck in a hotel and is currently at the police station, making it uncertain if he can make it to the church. As they discuss, the church bell unexpectedly rings. Suddenly, a surprising twist occurs. Rob discovers a reality glitch, and within seconds, he's back in the elevator without clothes. Perplexed, Rob wonders how he ended up there again. The elevator doors open, and everyone is astonished to see him. A man starts taking his photo once more. Recalling the previous events, Rob attempts a different escape strategy, heading to the hotel roof. He calls Benjamin, and realizes he has returned to the same day as before. This means that he somehow time-traveled again to the morning when everyone is awaiting his arrival at the church. Surprisingly, only he retains the memory of this time travel, with others oblivious to it. Determined to make it to the church, Rob encounters the famous singer Brian, and, after a request for clothes, is offered underwear by Brian's girlfriend. Reluctantly, Rob wears it and heads to the church, now familiar with the sequence of events. Upon reaching his hotel, he receives a call from Megan's best friend, Vicky, questioning why he hasn't arrived at the church yet. Rob assures her that he is on his way after getting dressed. As he enters his hotel room, the church bell rings again, and Rob finds himself back in time in the elevator on the same morning. 
Realizing he is stuck in a time loop that resets every time the church bell rings, leaving him in the elevator without clothes, Rob reacts swiftly. He grabs a man's paper bag, puts it on, and rushes to the bathroom to call his mother. He begins explaining the confusing truth to his mother, how he unexpectedly keeps returning to the same morning. As expected, his mother didn't believe him. Realizing that he travels back in time whenever the church bell rings, he calls the church priest and requests a temporary halt to bell ringing for the next one, two hours. However, before he can elaborate further, the bell rings again, and Rob finds himself back in time. Frustrated, he leaves without clothes, then he steals a girl's clothes on the way and continuing to the church on a bike, despite not knowing how to ride one. This leads to an accident, and he is transported to the hospital by an ambulance. Surprisingly, the ambulance route aligns with the direction of the church where his wedding is taking place. Understanding this, Rob jumps from the ambulance in front of the church and manages to escape inside. There, Megan's ex-boyfriend, Cody, chastises him for his strange outfit on the day of his wedding. Cody insists that Rob can't get married in such attire. Rob realizes that he might not be reaching the wedding on time, causing the time loop. To break the cycle, he decides to arrive at the church on time in the next loop and marry Megan. In the subsequent loop, Rob wakes up, arranges clothes, and intentionally collides with a pillar to prompt the arrival of an ambulance. Once again, Rob reaches the church, jumps from the ambulance, and runs to the ceremony on time. However, when Megan arrives for the wedding, the church bell rings, and Rob finds himself back in the elevator. In the following loops, Rob manages to reach the church, but each time, he lacks wedding clothes. Megan's father intervenes, preventing the wedding, and insists that Rob wear proper wedding attire. With the limited time in each loop, Rob cannot retrieve his clothes from his hotel room before the bell rings. In a strategic move, Rob asks Cody for his suit size, and in the next loop, when the next cycle begins, Rob breaks the glass of Cody's car outside the church and persuades Cody to lend him his suit for the wedding. Cody rejects Rob's request, leading to a fight between them. Despite Cody's superior fighting skills, Rob learns from each loop, and in one instance, he finally manages to defeat Cody. Wearing Cody's suit, Rob arrives at the church for the wedding, feeling optimistic about breaking the time loop by marrying Megan. However, a twist of fate intervenes. Mr. Sam reminds Rob that he forgot to bring the wedding cards, initiating a debate that results in the church bell ringing again. In subsequent loops, Rob forgets various essential items, such as cards, wedding rings, and gifts, prompting Sam to send him to retrieve them, causing the bell to ring repeatedly. Eventually, Rob gathers everything needed for the wedding and is ready to marry Megan. The priest begins the ceremony, asking Rob to recite vows for Megan. At this crucial moment, Rob realizes that, amid all the challenges and fights, he forgot to memorize the wedding vows. This time, Rob consciously waits for the bell to ring. As soon as the loop resets, he avoids attending many loops of his own wedding, and instead goes to witness other weddings. His intention is to listen to the vows and memorize them. After recalling everything, he returns to his own wedding. This time, following the priest's instructions, he successfully recites his wedding vows for Megan. As the priest is about to conclude the ceremony, a flock of pigeons descends. Rob, eager to break the loop, dismisses the distraction and urges the priest to complete the wedding. Observing Rob's peculiar behavior, Benjamin advises him to stay calm. Rob, however, loses his temper and confronts Benjamin, expressing the troubles he faced that day and questioning Benjamin's actions the previous night. In the heat of the moment, Benjamin reveals the truth to everyone. He discloses that Rob had accompanied a girl to his hotel after drinking the night before. Shocked by this revelation, Megan decides to call off the wedding and leaves the scene. Rob attempts to stop Megan, but she slaps him and leaves. Meanwhile, a candle falls, causing a fire in the church. Fueled by anger, Rob heads to the church roof to break the bell, as it resets the time loop every time it rings. Climbing onto the bell, he accidentally falls with it, triggering the bell to ring again and resetting the loop, returning him to the same elevator. Understanding his irresponsibility, especially going with a girl under the influence of alcohol, Rob decides to apologize to Megan. He admits that he may not be worthy of her, and Mr. Sam's concerns very correct. He is not worthy for her. Megan, angered by his actions, declares that she never wants to see him again. She is very disappointed. In the next loop, feeling completely shattered, Rob attempts suicide by jumping off a high bridge, but he miraculously survives. Trying to end his life, he finds himself back in the same elevator, realizing that he is unable to die at will, and the situation has become utterly hopeless.
He aimlessly wanders around, passing time. In one loop, he climbs the tree near the wedding church, silently observing Megan. During this, he notices Cody discussing with Mr. Sam about acquiring more than half of the company's shares. Rob learns that Cody is the one taking over Mr. Sam's company, but before he can confront Cody, the loop resets. In the next loop, Rob revisits the people he encountered at the loop's beginning, still unsure about what to do and how to save Mr. Sam's company. Returning to his hotel room in the same loop, he reads the love messages sent by Megan. However, he is surprised when he finds a girl named Kelly in his bed. Rob questions her identity, and Kelly explains that they met the previous night when he was drunk, and someone paid her to spend the night with him. Worried, Rob asks if anything happened, but Kelly reassures him that he fell asleep right away because he was drunk. And when he woke up in the morning, he was missing from the room. Rob is puzzled about who paid Kelly to spend the night with him, Recalling the police's earlier statement that someone intentionally left him in the elevator without clothes, he wonders who could be behind these actions. As the time loop resets, Rob decides to stay in the same moment. Seeking information, he asks the hotel security to show the CCTV footage from the previous night. Reviewing the footage, Rob discovers that Megan's best friend, Vicky, was the one who brought him to the hotel, drugged him, left him without clothes in the lift, and then fled. Realizing Vicky's involvement, along with her ex-boyfriend Cody, Rob understands their plot to disrupt his marriage with Megan and enable Cody to marry her. Additionally, they plan to jointly take over Mr. Sam's company. With this newfound knowledge, Rob contacts Mega. He assures Megan that he now understands everything and is determined to set things right. In the next loop, Rob finally understands what he needs to do to rectify everything. He heads to the police officers he encountered in previous loops, utilizing the information he learned about them. Rob convinces the officers to give him a ride to the church, where he calls Kelly and asks her to bring his wedding suit. In the church loop, Cody and Mr. Sam try to convince Megan to marry Cody, arguing that Rob is unworthy. However, Megan remains steadfast in her belief in Rob. Suddenly, they hear police sirens outside, signaling Rob's arrival. In haste, Rob prepares and arrives at the church, joined by Megan and her father. Mr. Sam, angered by Rob's presence, insists that Megan should marry someone like Cody. Rob takes the opportunity to reveal the truth about Cody, exposing his attempts to sabotage Mr. Sam's business and the deceit behind disrupting Rob's marriage. With the truth revealed, Cody confesses to buying a significant portion of shares of Mr. Sam's company. Mr. Sam becomes furious after learning the truth. Rob, trying to console him, swears to change for Megan and become a responsible person. Mr. Sam, now calmer, embraces Rob and gives him the ring used for Megan's mother at the wedding. As the ceremony progresses, Rob sincerely expresses his vows to Megan. When asked if there are any objections to the marriage, Vicky, in an attempt to disrupt the ceremony, claims to have seen Rob with a female in his room the night before. Rob defends himself stating that Vicky and Cody organized the incident and persuaded Kelly to spend the night with him, but nothing happened. Kelly confirms the facts and everyone asks Vicky to leave. With this discovery, Rob and Megan's wedding is completed and the time loop ends. Reflecting on the situation, Rob learns crucial lessons, admitting his shortcomings and commits to becoming a responsible individual. The loop taught him important life lessons and he looks forward to a more responsible future. Now, if you find yourself in such a weird situation, so what will you do? Tell me in the comments. Also subscribe to the channel for such time loop and time travel videos. Thank you.